Delegates of the United Methodist Church from all around the world meet quadrennally to discuss legislation and direction of the denomination. Today, we are talking with Jerry Reese, the Secretary of General Conference. Thank you for coming. My pleasure to be with you. Can you tell us a little bit of your duties um, that encompass that position? Well, the first duty is preparing delegates to come to General Conference, giving them orientation to how General Conference functions, helping them understand parliamentary procedure. A parliamentary procedure differs around the world, so uh, someone coming to us from, from Nigeria will not have the same understanding of parliamentary procedure as someone who comes to us from Alabama. Yeah, you said that was really key, actually, um, whenever you came into the position that you wanted to start those orientations because um, there were some differences. Can you explain the one example that you have? Well, sure. Uh, first of all, let me say that, that I've been volunteering at General Conference since 1992. In every General Conference, I saw delegates being ruled out of order who had no idea why they mm -hmm. were being ruled out of order. And... It was, it, it hurt me to see them being embarrassed, feeling helpless in the situation, and recognize that the, the bishops, presiding elders, did not have time to, to deal with that to help people understand. When I was asked if I would be secretary, one of the things that caused me to agree to it was that I wanted to be able to help delegates understand how to function, to be fully participant in general conference. Now, the item I mentioned to you is the, the fact that we have in Robert's Rules of Order, a strictly American invention, we have this language about tabling something, which means we don't want to talk about it. However, in much of Africa, the language of tabling means we, when we say we want to put something on the table, they mean they want to talk about it. So if they say, I'm laying this on the table, they're not saying we don't want to talk about it, they're saying we do want to talk about it. Of course, when it gets translated and the presiding elder hears it, the bishop hears it at general conference, he's thinking, well, he wants us to stop talking about it. It's not in order at this point, and so he, the person's ruled out of order, when in fact what the person is trying to say is, let's talk about it. Right. So helping the delegates who come to us from around the world understand the language they need to use in order to communicate effectively in the general conference session, that's a very important part of what I do uh, and what the position calls for. And so we've been, we've been working hard to integrate uh, that process of training into the, the cycle of four years of General Conference. And I, I'm very pleased to say that we've seen improvement in functioning. Uh, the General Conference this time had the highest level of participation of Central Conference delegates it's ever had, and the participation was entirely appropriate. It was on point. People were using parliamentary procedure well. I was very gratified by that. And I'm sure that they felt very gratified as well to know that um, their opinions were being taken into account because they were going through the proper procedures. Yes. The, the, there have been numerous comments that I've received uh, of thanks from delegates from around the world, uh, appreciating the fact that they know how to, how to react in the parliamentary setting. And it's important for us to understand that they're eager to understand how to participate, to be part of it. Mm -hmm. They have a perspective that we need to hear. We don't provide interpretation services at General Conference for the sake of delegates from overseas. We provide that for our sake so we can understand what they're saying. Mm -hmm. Because, <laughs> frankly, they've already got two or three languages down. Okay. Some of the delegates I've spoken with speak five and eight languages fluently. So it's not so much the issue of helping them as it is the issue of helping us be able to hear them so we get good input from them. What are some of the other challenges and benefits that you've seen of us growing as a global church? Well, one of the big, big challenges is also participation in another way. Because we historically meet in the United States, the whole issue of visas for oh. people from outside the United States is a big that. issue. Yeah. Um, it's just very difficult uh, to coordinate a, a body of nearly a thousand members coming from around the world uh, and, and, and an, an equal number or larger number of support people 
most of whom come from the U.S., but some of those come from around the world, too. So that's it's an administrative process, the benefits of a global church. For one thing, if we're not a global church, are we really a church? Mm. Or are we just a, a neighborhood community gathering? It, 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 we have to be a global church if we're going to follow Christ's command. If we're going to speak the gospel to the whole world, we have to be a global church. We can't be just a Susquehanna conference. Right. We, we have to see the world as it is, and it's a large place. Mm -hmm. The other benefits, we hear different ways of doing things. We hear different ideas. We, we get to think outside of a cultural box and, and live in a larger world. That's good for us because both intellectually and spiritually and emotionally we're stimulated in new and different ways. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 the ministry of the church is strengthened when it can be a global ministry and not just a U.S. ministry. Thanks for watching this webisode of Susquehanna Express. Check the website for part two, where Jerry Reese addresses some of the concerns with General Conference, the benefits of gathering as a global church, and goals for the future.